top of the game, Olympic champion, 40 World Cup wins, eight World Championships. Not much more needs to be said about Yanya Garmbret. Probably the greatest competition climber who has ever lived, male or female. So a breathtakingly strong lineup on the women's side. And, we'll... and here we can see uh, the winners from the past few years. As I mentioned right at the top of the broadcast, 2020. So the order this evening will be that we'll have the uh, quarterfinal for the women first, semi-finals for the women, and then uh, women's small final, women's big final. Staggering level, level of difficulty for all but the world elite, and the climbers are racing up this in less than 90 seconds. So this is how they'll line up uh, for the women's duel. So the starting order was decided according to qualification times, simple knockout format. Whoever gets to the top first progresses to the next round. So Natsuki Tani is first out. Uh, Yanya alongside her. So you can see there are four routes on the wall here in Arco. Uh, the left hand blue and the red are the women's routes. So Yanya will climb on the left hand blue. Should do, look like she's going for the, the yellow then. Um, and that Suku will climb on the red. Now, if the climbers happen to touch holds on the adjacent route, so if they use a hold, uh, for example, if the women use a hold on the men's route, that's absolutely fine. There's no disqualification, there's no penalty. However, they do have to clip the quick draws on their route, so they can't suddenly go over and do a couple of moves on the men's route and clip the quick draws. They're welcome to do the moves, but they've got to come back to the quick draws uh, on their own route. Speaking of quick draws, yeah, you with a quick... Uh, fumbled on that third clip, regained her rhythm pretty quickly. No question, I think, amongst most people that Yanya Gamra is the favourite because she's always the favourite. She's not unbeatable, but she's usually the favourite. You can see already just why that might be. Despite the fumbled clip, Yanya looking pretty strong here against uh, Natsuki. She's heading up the left-hand blue and haven't really used any of the men's holds at all. I watched the qualification rounds and the climbers occasionally were putting their feet over on the, some of the men's holds and the men were doing it slightly more on the women's route but Yanya yeah, pretty much sticking to the women's line. Now, interestingly enough, as we get to the overhang here in Arco, which if you've watched any of the Rockmaster competitions or the, the lead World Cups we've had here, uh, will be very, very familiar. The roots actually merge, so the men and women, once they hit the very steepest bit of the wall, and, and the wall actually begins to curve back down towards itself here, they merge. So the men and the women will climb exactly the same moves on this section through the roof, and you can see from that angle just how much it does curve back down. Um, often been pondered how some of the women, particularly Yanya, would do on a men's lead route at a, at a World Cup. Well, today we'll see her do some of the moves that the men will be doing. Keep an eye on the clock. Yanyu's going to take this one home in 1.43. And uh, we'll keep an eye on Natsuki Tani. Remember, it is a straight knockout format, so sadly that is the last we'll see of Natsuki. As she tries to figure out these moves through the roof. We've had a couple of goes on the route, remember the climbers, but not enough to know it inside out. Uh, and Yanya, honestly, not looking too strained by her efforts. Natsuki looks like she's going to stop the clock uh, somewhere around the 2.20 mark. Two twenty on the dot. I don't want to say I told you so, but I did say 2.20. So if you're just tuning in, welcome to Arco Charlie Bosco here. Talking you through the legendary Arco Rockmaster Dual Competition. No boulder this year. Um, for various reasons here at Arco, it is just the duel in inverted commas. This is really the competition for which Arco is so famous. The 36th uh, edition of this amazing event. And Laura Agora and Hannah Mool, the latest climbers to try their luck on the legendary overhangs. The people who have won here reads like a, a who's who of climbing, honestly. This is such a prestigious event as Lauren and Hannah get underway. Angie Eit has won here, Lynn Hill has won here, the Stefan Glovatz, Francois Legrand, Jane Kim, Mina Markovic, Ramone, Adam Ondra, Yanya Garmbret. It really is a, an absolutely elite competition to win. And you can see from the speed these climbers are 
are attempting to get up these routes, just how badly they want it. Hannah Mool on the left, Laura Rigora uh, on the right. It's unusual to see climbers uh, climbing in this way when we watch lead World Cups. Obviously, there is a time element, and sometimes the time element can decide the competition. Uh, but in Arco, it's all about time, as long as you don't fall off. But the level of difficulty is such that the climbers shouldn't, in inverted commas, fall off provided they keep concentrating and execute the moves correctly. And so they're just basically racing the clock and it is absolutely astounding how quickly they can get up there. Uh, Hannah Mule now looks like she has a slight lead over Laura. Laura just emerging onto the uh, upper section. You can see, despite the different color holds, obviously the two routes are as identical as the route setters can make them. And uh, so we can really see the climbers absolutely side by side and head to head. And Hannah's got a, a bit of a lead here, but not a huge one. The crowd getting right behind them. Laura obviously hails from Italy, so the crowd could be forgiven for shouting a little louder for her. But it, I think Hannah Mool could just take this one. She's, it's closer than it might look because the moves are so big here. Uh, but Hannah, it looks like she's going to line up for that move before Laura does and takes it in 139. That is quicker than Yanya who took it in 1.43, but Hannah Mule uh, safely through that one and ended up pretty close. It looked like Laura was getting left behind slightly, then she caught up, and by the time uh, Hannah Mule topped out, it was very close indeed. So Hannah, four seconds quicker than Yanya. So Jesse Pills out next, won here last year. Camilla Moroni, uh, the second Italian climber we've seen out this evening. Of course, we've still got two more to come over on the men's side. You can see the climbers actually on the timing pads a la speed climbing. So the, the clock starts when they leave that foot pad. Uh, Jesse Pilts confidently up to that second clip and already has a, a tiny lead not that it means that much at this stage and you can see there Camilla Moroni actually using that foothold uh, over on the right that's on the men's route as I mentioned earlier no penalty for that you've just got to clip the quick draws on your route you can't be clipping quick draws on the other side but if you choose to use any footholds or handholds on the other route you're more than welcome to before they merge of course at the top uh, Jesse looking in control of this one uh, Camilla Moroni taking a couple of risks, perhaps to make up a little bit of time. Um, Jessie cuts loose now herself. Definitely got a, from this angle, it looks like about a body length lead. And despite only having a couple of goes on this route during practice and qualification, Jessie's looking very, very solid on it. You can see Camilla just about to hit that angle change. Definitely with a little bit of work to do. Jesse just creeping up. I think, I think with hindsight, as we saw with uh, Yanya, you can afford to uh, lessen the risk slightly if you look over and you see that you've got a bit of a lead. And I think that's what Jesse's doing. She doesn't have that frantic climbing style that we saw uh, from Laura and Hannah. So they were really racing through this overhang. Jesse can take her time a little bit more. She can't chalk up. Partly because she hasn't got that much time. And secondly, the climbers haven't even got their chalk bags with them. It's all about speed. And that is quick from Jesse. 138. That's the quickest we've seen yet. So despite uh, not being pushed too hard, not having to really rush, that's still a really quick time for Jesse. And Camille Laroni wraps, Maroni wraps it up. But regardless, great to see Vita back. A few years ago, she had a really bad knee injury. Uh, but she is back and absolutely back to full strength. Recently got over the hurdle of that first World Cup win in Briançon. And, uh, and of course, Brooke did the same when her first Boulder World Cup earlier on this year. So both climbers having real breakthrough seasons after long and successful junior careers. Getting ready to go. So Brooke on the left on the blue holes. Vita on the right. You can see climbers getting a bit of a, a bouldering style spot just until they're a couple of quick draws up and now they're on the way. 
uh, Vita clipping from a bit of an awkward position, trying to clip a quick draw and it's right in front of you, kind of sitting in your lap can be really awkward. And uh, she just uh, lost a little bit of time with that. It looks like Brooks just beginning to pull away. Not much in it though. Probably three to four moves. And again, Vita just with an air versus a slightly awkward clip. Really tricky balance that the climbers are trying to find here. You're trying to go quickly, but also not make any mistakes, clip in decent positions. You, you can't just throw yourself up the, up the wall. These routes are definitely hard enough that you can fall off. I wouldn't want anyone to think this is pure speed climbing. These are hard routes, but they're compared to, say, a Lead World Cup. They're not at the cutting edge of difficulty, but that doesn't mean you can't make a mistake, you can't fall, you can't get yourself in an awkward position for a clip, you can't misread a sequence. There's still difficulty involved, so you're trying to find that constant balance between risk and reward, and it looks like Brooke Rabatou really has found it. She is absolutely uh, flying here. Be interested to see the time. Take it a little longer than some of the climbers have, I think, just to turn and get faced the right way. But as she goes up, we could be about to see her fastest time. 1.38 to beat, and she does beat it. 1.36, Brooke, the fastest climber of the four to progress to the semi-finals. Uh, Yanya, actually the slowest at 1.43. And let's see what Vita can do. 1.49 for Vita. So Yanya Gambra, Hannah Mool, Jesse Pilts, and Brooke Rabatou, the four climbers through. What a setting, one of the most famous walls. Can we say the most famous wall in the world? Uh, competition wall, the Arco overhangs. Just a shame you can't see the even bigger natural one behind. But that's how it ended up. Yanya through, Hannah through, Jesse through, and Brooke as well. So he did not rush the upper moves, so there's no question she can go quicker. Hannah Moore, you suspect, uh, will need to find some extra speed as well. So Yanya on the left, Hannah on the right. Yanya looks ready for business. Some things never change. It's Hannah who got the ever so slightly better start and Yanya just got the rope caught on the back of her hand there while she was trying to make a clip. And it's cost her a little bit of time. So Yanya with work to do, Hannah in the lead for now, but only just, only just. A move in it, very little between these two. You can see Yanya not short of power uh, by any means. Hannah the same. Results have been coming from Hannah Mool, particularly uh, in the boulder this season. So uh, like Yanya, a, a dual threat in two disciplines. No issue whatsoever with powerful moves. But suddenly, seemingly from nowhere, we were focusing on Yanya. We pan back and from nowhere, she's four, maybe five moves ahead and absolutely flying up. Uh, through this middle third of the route, about to enter the point at which things get really steep where it merges with the men's route. No problem for Yanya, just needs to get this slightly uncomfortable clip done. We've seen a few different positions for that clip. Yanya going feet first and it seemed to work for her. Hannah, with work to do, is really relying on Yanya making a mistake here, and I don't think Yanya is going to make a mistake. She is not. She stops the clock. 1.26 shaves off 17 seconds from her last run. I said she had a bit more in the tank, and we definitely saw it. Hannah, by the way, it was 1.39 on her first run, so she's actually going to be slower than her first run. Perhaps fatigue, maybe made a small mistake. We weren't able to see her for a good chunk of the route, but either way, she comes second to Yanya Garmbret, 152. Just hung on till it was the right time to move, and got it done. So, 126 now, the fastest we've seen any of the women on this route. Yeah, that was Yanya just now. Uh, Brooke on the right, rather two of the US, and Jesse Pultz of Austria on the left.
So Jesse and Brooke underway. Brooke looked like she had the, the tiniest of leads. They're actually doing the, the moves. That was slightly different about that, that lower section, so couldn't really compare who was ahead. Brooke Rabatou, whose parents both have won Arca Master, Didier Rabatou and Robin Ebbetsfield. Um, Brooke looking to make it a third win for the family here on the overhangs of Arco. But it's Jesse who's got the, the slight lead, one move ahead at this. But it really does seem to come down to maybe not even the steepest section of the wall. From what it's from what we've seen so far, it seems that it's this panel they're about to hit now where it gets really steep but not quite coming back towards horizontal. It really seems to determine who goes into the steepest bit of the wall with the lead. And it is Brooke at this stage uh, who's the faster of the two climbers. You see Jesse having had perhaps a very marginal lead, suddenly slightly stalled out. Brooke having all sorts of trouble. Those long quick draws are much harder to clip than the short ones. And this has suddenly got very, very tight. And it's Jesse who makes a key clip first, but it's Brooke who turns around first. There's going to be very little in this. I think Brooke will just about take it. She will in 123 to Jesse's 125. So, small final for the women. Hannah Mool on the left, Jesse Pilt. Uh, Jesse, 125 uh, in her last run. And Hannah, 152. So, Hannah Mool really needs to find something special here and possibly count on some mistakes from Jesse because judging on the times we've seen so far Jesse the clear favorite here an advantage of almost 20 seconds when it comes to uh, personal best so far Jesse a couple of moves ahead but not a lot in it at this stage Jesse getting plenty of encouragement. There's a strong Austrian contingent as ever. It's only a couple of hours. Uh, and whether it's the encouragement or whether it's just her raw power and speed, Jesse's opened up herself. A nice lead here. Can afford to maybe take slightly risk, less risky options. Slow it down. Save a, a bit of juice for the overhang. Once you've got that awkward long quick draw clipped. I haven't seen anyone struggling too much. The moves are quite time consuming. But you don't, don't seem to be at anyone's physical limit. So now she's got a nice healthy lead. She should, I would imagine, just slow it down slightly. And although I think she has slowed it down because Hannah's just begun to catch up. But Jesse knows that this bronze medal is in the bag. 128 for Jesse. She's actually only uh, three seconds slower than on her semi-final run. Even though you could see visibly she slowed down through the... After taking the gold last year, 144 uh, for Hannah, more than many other climbing competitions. And it's really good to see. So, Yanya and Brooke, I am looking forward to this one. So, America's Brooke Rabatou, closest to the camera with Yanya Gamra of Slovenia on the left. Unquestionably the most successful competition of all, all time, Yanya Gamra. And Brooke, really in recent years, begun to emerge as a true rival to Yanya. Could she claim the same title her parents have both claimed before? Could she get one over on the Olympic champion just a year out from Tokyo, uh, from Paris, excuse me? We shall well see. Uh, Yanya, again, has a pretty relatively quick climbing style, but Brooke, more than staying with her, they are pretty much even here. Yanya went for the move first, Brooke went for the clip first. So it looked like Yanya had a slight lead, but she actually didn't at that stage. Right now, we're just focusing on Brooke. Here's Yanya. 
they know the moves well now. We can start to do a, take a couple of risks, jump for holds, because they know what each hole will feel like. They have a pretty good idea of what's waiting for them at each stage. Yanya definitely got the lead here, but there's not much in it. This could be the key section right here where it begins to steepen up. There's very little in this. You can hear the crowd going absolutely crazy. Yanya got a lead of maybe two moves, three moves. Oh, and Brooke could have just done without that fumble on the quick draw. But she was through the roof so quickly. This is going to be so tight. It looks like Yanya's going to take it. She lines it up. One minute, ten seconds. Yanya Garnbrett wins in Arco. Amazing performance from her. Brooke Rabatou so close to beating the master. Yanya Garnbrett just knows how to dig out the win. One minute and 10 seconds, that's absolutely remarkable. It's a 33 second improvement from her time in the quarterfinals. A uh, 16 second improvement on her semi-final time. Yanya just knows how to win. She's the master. And you can see here, this is where things got a little bit tight. Brooke foot struggled with the clip a little bit, the long quick draw, and then absolutely flew through the um, very steepest bit of the overhang. But alas, it wasn't enough. As is the case, so often Yandy Garnbrecht takes the win. It's Brooke Rabatou in second place, and Jesse Pulse, 2022 winner of Arco Rockmaster, backed it up this year with a bronze medal. Jesse Pills takes third place. She won it last year in a pretty remarkable race uh, against Vita Lucan in the final. Time. She has to settle for third. A very fierce competitor, as we've been saying about uh, Jakob and Adam. Jesse really would like to be a couple of steps over to her right. And I'm sure the woman that we're about to see Getting up on the podium would like to be a couple of steps to her left. Brooke Rabatou, she takes second place. It's a big result for her. But she was here to win, I suspect. The tricky thing is when you take you on yet, winning becomes an even bigger challenge. Yanya Garnbrett. She's won the Olympics. She's won 40 World Cups, eight World Championships. And picks up yet another gold medal. We said Adam must have a big mantelpiece. Yanya uh, must be about the size of the field here in Arco.